Well, hello and welcome everybody to this OpenShift Commons briefing. Um, today we're going to hear from Nigel Brown, who's a developer advocate at IBM, about um, Java application deployment options um, for OpenShift on the IBM Cloud. Um, we're really excited to have Nigel here today, and today is also our first experiment in um, live streaming to Twitch. So um, if you see me Twitch a few times today, it's just because um, this is a new experiment. And as well, uh, Nigel will be available for some Q&A at the very end of this. So um, if you're joining through BlueJeans, ask the questions in the BlueJeans chat. If you're joining through Twitch, ask the questions on Twitch, and um, our other moderator over there will forward the questions into to this session. So um, without any further ado, Nigel, thank you very much um, for coming, and we're thrilled to have you. So um, take it away, and let's um, see what live demoing does on Twitch and streams at the same time. Oh, this is going to be great. Thank you all for having me so much. Um, my name's Nigel, as has already been said. I'm a developer advocate at IBM. I do advocacy around IBM Cloud, working a lot on cloud-native de deployments, working on containers and Kubernetes and OpenShift. So uh, one of the things that we noticed when we were starting to do a lot of these workshops is that people were happy with the demos that we were giving in Node.js, but we, a lot of people were coming from Java backgrounds or have like their um, monolithic applications or other types of applications that are written in Java that they want to be able to get into OpenShift and we weren't doing them enough of a service. So. Um, what we have here today is a workshop that's going to go through some of the more um, entry-level um, overview of OpenShift and about how we can get our Java applications, specifically those um, that are written in a microservice way, to deploy onto OpenShift. And if uh, the demo gods are willing, we'll be able to show you um, a few different ways of deploying, um, get to show off some of the features of OpenShift, as well as uh, this very lightweight, bare bones example of a Java microservice that you can take and modify for your own uses. So I'm going to switch off the slide and bring in um, where we're going to be working from today. Okay, let's see. And then quick question, can people see my, my camera as well or are they only seeing my screen? Uh, we're seeing both your face and your screen. Okay. I will try not to pull any weird faces while we're too. No promises. Myself as um, well. Okay. <laughs> um, and then I will share this chat. Um, so this is a workshop that I gave last week on the 13th. Um, and I set up a gist uh, that we had going at the time with a lot of helpful links in it. So uh, I'm going to drop the gist there so you all can follow along with everything that's going on here. Um, what I want to show is this link here. So it's an OpenShift on IBM Cloud workshop that was written to show Java and OpenShift 4. Um, the application that we're showing today shows us a web app uh, that would be a sort of like author return system. So you'd uh, send a GET request um, to figure out who an author is and get information back on that person. Um, so we've got the web application front end that requests data from the web API. The web API retrieves a list of articles, title and author's name from the article service. And for every author, it retrieves the details, the blog URL and the Twitter handle from the author's service. Um, in this lab, we only use the author service. But again, this is built as a very bare bones skeleton thing that you can build on top of for your own application. Um, so I want to give a huge shout out to uh, Nicholas and Heid uh, Nicholas Heidloff and uh, Harold, uh, whose names you'll see a lot through this workshop because they're the ones that wrote this content. So we have uh, in this workshop, they have like the three optional parts, uh, well, the prereqs and then the two optional parts. And then um, the rest of it is for the four through eight, the fourth through the eighth exercises um, are more dealing with getting the IBM Cloud deployment working and hooking it in with other services and uh, things of that nature. But I think that it's important that we do spend a little bit of time in the optional parts because that's where all of the content about Java is. And this lab is beautifully documented. So whenever you do want to go or view it, um, it, it'll be all there for you. I'm going to move this over so I can see that um, as we're going in case people write things there. All right, perfect. Close up. Okay, where were we? Here. 
So we're going to start off with the prerequisites, of course. Um, one of the beautiful things about working in IBM Cloud is that we have an IBM Cloud shell now. Um, so if I go into IBM Cloud and I hit this little button here that looks like a shell, we'll get a shell that loads up. And if you don't want to install packages locally, uh, it's, you know, especially with keeping track of versioning and everything else, you can definitely work in the IBM Cloud shell. You can do most things that you need to do there. Anything uh, that's uh, Docker related, you'll have to have a local Docker and Git installation. But for everything else, dealing with um, OC, the OpenShift CLI, dealing with Cube Control, Cube CTL, Cube Cuddle, um, however you pronounce it, I'm not going to die on that hill today. Um, you can use all of that inside of IBM's Cloud shell. Um, the rest of the prereqs, uh, oh, I should probably put the link in for creating an IBM Cloud account. I did not do that. Um, I will get that and put it in later. Okay, so um, the rest of this, so we're going to go and grab the GitHub repo that we're going to be using. So in the Cloud shell, we're going to clone a repo. Um, so I'm going to do this. Um, then we're going to move the order of these to the beginning. And then, yeah, if there are any questions that um, anyone has, especially Diane, if you want to ask you anything or say anything while we're going through um, and the more mundane parts of me copying and pasting things, I'm happy to do that. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to change into that. And then uh, the last step there on the prereqs is to create an environment variable called root folder. We're going to be passing that in as an argument to some commands later. So, yeah, if you're not familiar with bash, this just essentially sets a environment variable called root folder and runs the command print working directory. So it says this folder is the output of that root folder. We can make sure that it went through by sending an echo out for that root folder. Cool. We are in the right place. Great. Um, and then I already have a cluster provisioned in IBM Cloud. This is me, PNB dev. Um, but if you were creating um, an OpenShift cluster, uh, it would you'd go to the catalog. Actually, let me do that a different way. So once you sign into your IBM Cloud account, you go to the catalog, and then they're gonna have some featured recommended things. But if you uh, search for OpenShift. Get this Red Hat OpenShift on IBM Cloud. Um, and then you have uh, a choice between uh, 3.11 or 4.3. Um, and yeah, go through, set up your cluster however you'd like, pick out your infrastructure and how many worker nodes you need. And then, yeah, you'll it'll take about a half an hour-ish to get the cluster up and running. And when you do, you'll get to a page like this that tells me I have a cluster set up with two worker nodes that are working normally. Um, let me close my Slack <laughs> um, so that we don't get interrupted. Um, and if I go to the OpenShift web console, which I've done here on this page where the topology shows up, um, this is what we get. Oh, I'm in the developer persona. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, this is how my cluster is doing right now. Cool. And that gets us through the prereqs. Um, one of the things that's cool to see is that when you're inside of the OpenShift, uh, the web console, you can grab this command here. So if you hit the drop down on the name and you copy the login command, generally a bad idea to broadcast your tokens. I'm going to do it quickly. And they're going to reset in probably an hour or so. So you won't be able to hit my cluster after this. Um, but uh, yes, reset. Um, oh, cool, great. Um, and then if I open up my Cloud Shell and then just paste that command in, it logs me in. And yeah, now I, I can look in OC version just to see that I'm logged into my cluster and it tells me all about my OpenShift cluster that's running. Okay. And I think that brings us to the end of the prerequisites. Um, Nothing in the comments yet. Hopefully people are still okay, still hanging out with us. Um, 
And so this part would skip ahead to lab four. We don't want to do that because um, we want to look at the prereqs. We want to talk about what's going on um, with Java. So the lab two, the first part, and there's helpful videos to get you through all of the content that's here um, of Niklas or and or Harold working through all of these different examples. But it's important to kind of bring up the infrastructure of our Java code. Um, so we created microservices implemented with Java EE and Eclipse MicroProfile. The microservice has been kept as simple as possible so they can be used as a starting point for other microservices. It contains the following functionality. We got an image um, with OpenJ9, OpenJDK, OpenLiberty, and MicroProfile. We've got a Maven project for all of our project management needs. We've got an OpenLiberty server. That's how our web server is working. We've got a health endpoint, which is going to be important later when we start talking about how uh, OpenShift works, how Kubernetes works to make sure that our applications are running healthily. Um, we've got YAML files for folks who may have be used to already deploying to Kubernetes and want to do a similar style of deployment to OpenShift. And then we have our sample REST uh, Git endpoints for the author's application, for the Git author, and for the author. Um, and then, uh, again, the service provides the REST API get author. Normally we use a database, but we're storing the data locally just so that we can show how all of these things fit together. Um, and I would encourage you definitely, if you're working through this on your own time, take a take a minute, read through this. This is really good. Um, it even links out to a blog that Niklas has written about how to run the Hello World Java microservice. Um, and then we've got um, inside of our repo as well, because we're going to talk about different methods of deploying to OpenShift, one method we're going to talk about is deploying with the Docker file. If you already have a Docker file defined for, uh, for the application that you're trying to run, you can do that really simply with OpenShift. Um, and in the Docker file, it, it's interesting because it's a multi-step build. Um, we've got at the beginning, we build an environment container from, uh, from all of the requirements for Java, and that sets up all of everything that we need to build the application, and it makes sure that the container that we're deploying doesn't have anything in it that it doesn't need, because if you set up one container, for example, that has all of the build tools in it, then that's just a bigger container than, than it needs to be. But if we set one up first to, to handle all of the build, uh, to handle all of the environment variables, to handle all of the environment setup, getting Maven installed, everything like that, and then we start another container, um, that actually runs our application. The container that gets sent out to production is a lot lightweight, more lightweight um, and easier to deploy, especially, and that's something that will become a concern as we're deploying more and more microservices and looking at the resource requirements of what we're building. And so this, uh, the example, we'll take it line by line to say, okay, here's what's going on in, in each line of microprofile. And then there's an option to, excuse me, in each line of the Docker file, not microprofile. Um, but there's an option here to, to run the, uh, the container locally to see what's going on here. I'm going to check how we're doing on time to see. Uh, does, yeah. You got as much time as you need. Uh, make oh. sure you cover everything you need in as much depth as you, you can. Awesome. All right. Well, yeah, let's, let's, let's do this locally. Let's, um, let me make this a little bigger. So I've done this before, so I will have already, I'll already have the repo down here. And, oh yeah, no, wrong repo. It's the OpenShift on IBM Cloud. That's the one we're looking at. Cool. Um, and then if I go to, Yeah. Why not use S to I? Thank you. Um, I'm so glad you brought uh, S to I up. We are going to be going in. It's honestly, S to I is one of my favorite features of OpenShift. So for those who are unfamiliar, S to I stands for source to image. It's an open source project that's worked on by Red Hat. And what it allows is for us to create these custom builder images that will take our code that's already been deployed uh, our code that's already been written, package that into a container for us and run that. Because essentially a container is just a process 
that has all the isolation around it. So if we create these um, this automated way of outputting a process that can access all of the libraries and features that it needs, um, then it's a lot easier to get people who have never used containers before to be able to use it. And one of the really cool things, actually, let's let's take it. That's that is something that we do look at in this workshop. We will absolutely do that. Um, but the reason I don't bring it up early is because I think that for the people who are doing a lot of Java deployments, um, they're often what I found is they want to get a sense of what's happening with the Java first before we show them. Okay, hey, actually, there's this really cool thing that you can do called source to image where you don't have to deal with these build containers and everything. Um, we have the containers already built ahead of time for you. Um, but yeah, let's look at, uh, so if I go to my, um, if I go to my developer view in OpenShift and I look at uh, the topology, because there's no workload running in this default project, we're gonna create a project later for what we're gonna do. Um, if you go to the from catalog here, you have a, a, a huge list of ready-built builder images to set up builds inside of OpenShift. Um, we use a lot the, the Node.js one, but if you wanted to do an Nginx server or Perl or anything like that, you have a ton of, of builder images here. And if you don't see what you need, um, there's it's really good documentation for setting up your own builder images and even having them be able to show up in the catalog as well. But yeah, we will get to source to image builds um, but the reason that I didn't show it was at least to show how the Java implementation works and how you could set it up without doing, um, or how you can set it, how we set it up to show all of these different options for deploying in OpenShift. But yeah, Source Image is amazing. I love it dearly, um, and we will talk about it. Um, so back to what we have here. Um, I've got my. We've got a Docker file here. So if we look at the Docker file, it's the same that we saw in the in the first exercise in that um, in what we just went through. Let me pull up. Uh, just gonna pull up the instructions on a different site so that I'm not continually switching windows back and forth. Um, cool. Got it here, great. So um, we wanna go into, let's see, we wanna change into root folder that um, set that variable locally yet. So I'm gonna go up one and then set that root folder variable that we did before. Okay, and then we're gonna change into root folder um, slash uh, deploying to OpenShift. And in this folder, we're gonna go ahead and uh, Docker build. We're gonna tag it um, as authors. And we're going to build this directory here that we looked at before that has the, the Docker file in it. It's really fast because I have built this container before. Um, and then I'm going to run it. So Docker run. Uh, we want it to be interactive. We want to remove it when it's done. And we want to map port 3000 um, to 3000. And uh, we're gonna call the authors container. That's what we just tagged that build that we just did. And we're gonna give that a second to get up and running. Um, so the the thing about this container that I've noticed as opposed to other ones is that it does take a little bit longer to get going, but that was a little bit more heavyweight. There's a lot of things that are happening in the background to be able to get well, what we're about to see happening. So we're gonna look at all these, all this logging is normal. Um, and as soon as it tells us it's ready, then we're gonna go look at the host 3000 um, and look at the application that we're building. Are there any other questions while we're, while we're getting this set up? Um, and yeah, Dan, I don't know if there's anything else you wanna say about source to image. I see that you dropped the link there to the docs or SI. 
Yeah, no, um, the STI stuff's been around for a long time. It's really, really useful. Um, I'll share the links at the end of this session and um, people can do it. You can go to docs.openshift.com and just search on S2I and you'll find it if you're listening in. Um, but it's it's um, it's a really handy tool to have. And yeah, it, is all, and it's, it is all open source too, so it's pretty cool. Right. Yeah, and it is something that you, like Diane mentioned, it's open source, so you can use it outside of OpenShift um, if you want to set up your own build paths with S2I, you know, to do even your Kubernetes builds that you aren't doing with OpenShift, like, that's totally allowed, um, so. And, and everything uh, we do, all, all of OpenShift itself is open source um, as course. well, and all of the operators and anything else that we use in these apps are, you can find um, OKD is the name. You go to OKD.io, find um, OpenShift itself um, in all of its glory, and OperatorHub.io for any of the operators that we use um, as well. So it is Red Hat. We do everything in the open. Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, if I hit uh, port 3000, we see that I do have an Open Liberty server running. Um, and I'm gonna, let me just grab the path that I need to be able to look at what we're trying. First path that we need is uh, open API slash UI. And we get a graphical uh, view of the API working. So it makes it a lot easier to debug um, what's going on with our calls. Um, but yeah, if we run this uh, get author call, we the model is that it returns a name, a Twitter handle, and a blog address. Um, and so if we, uh, yeah, I could, if we curled, again, we could curl this endpoint and get the same information out. but. What's important to see is that if this is what we would expect to see once we have the deployment up on OpenShift, um, if it's not working, then we know something has gone wrong. So I'm going to jump back over to, see. yeah, we just wanted to see it running locally. Um, and we looked at the UI. And yeah, if you can't open a browser, you can hit a curl. Um, and then we're going to go over to Lab 3. I think I'm finished with running it locally, so I'm just gonna shut that container down, let it do its thing, um, and then we'll hop back over here. All right, great. So understanding the Java implementation, um, so yeah, using Maven. Uh, Maven is a software project management and comprehension tool. Concept of a project object model. Maven can manage a project, project's build, reporting, and documentation from a central piece of information. So this is the POM file that we have set up to explain um, our Maven implementation there. Um, how the Open Liberty server is configured is in this block here. Um, and then how the endpoint is um, implemented as well. So um, microservice architecture, popular approach for building cloud native applications in which each capability is developed as an independent service. It enables small autonomous teams to develop, deploy, and scale their respective services independently. Um, and then Eclipse Micro Profile is a really good way of doing that with Java. So the classes need to expose the author service. And then the author implementation is here. Yeah, as I said, all of this is really, really well documented. And I would encourage you, if you wanting to have a look at it, please take the time to do so. Um, but the important part that we're looking at here is what we saw, that each author has the attributes name, Twitter, and blog. Um, and when you're implementing this yourself, of course, do <laughs> whatever you need. Um, and then for getting the author, we want to figure out, we want to set what our responses are going to be, what our 404, 200, 500 errors are going to be, um, and then what we'd expect to get back. So this is the data that's being held locally. Um, so for what we want to change, um, we want to make edits to this block of text here to be able to see the application updating as we're building it. Um, and I think in the local implementation, I've already made updates uh, because yeah, I did this uh, a week ago and I didn't nuke the repo. Um, but for, uh, for what we're going to deploy, we'll be able to make some changes um, as we're going and, uh, and see there. Um, 
So let's go. Uh, yeah, and how we're going to support the live and readiness probes and Kubernetes with health checks. So one of the things to understand if you're not familiar with Kubernetes and OpenShift is this, this way of dealing with applications being built in being or being described in this uh, imperative versus declarative way. When we're working like with uh, declarative, uh, we when we work with imperative systems, what we do often is we have a clearly defined like algorithm for how our application should work, and that's what we as programmers often write. And then with um, imperative programming or with declarative programming, which is, or declarative like operation, which is how Kubernetes and OpenShift work. You say, when my application is healthy, this is these are the attributes that it has. And then with the use of the control plane in Kubernetes with it, um, the control loops are similar to how a thermostat might work. Um, we have like a thermometer that's telling us what the temperature in the room is. We have a desired temperature and it's constantly checking and making the changes to make our application be what we say it should be. And the way that we're enabling this um, in our application is with, these, uh, with this health endpoint that's uh, returning the values to say, hey, I'm I'm healthy, my data is ready to go, um, and if it's not, then we're going to get errors to come out of our system, and that's gone into in a bit of detail here. Excuse me, with um, how microprofile um, the the Kubernetes microprofile health documentation uh, on GitHub, so definitely check that out. Um, so. I've already changed the data and run the container locally, um, and we're going to move on to yeah to see it update but um now let's let's get into the deploying the open shift part i see a comment here i understand this is an introduction but since the door was open by nigel i hope he covers on binary builds versus just from source and delta builds. starting from a docker build is probably the slowest and worst option available with open shift uh, container platform um <laughs> yeah <laughs> and um one thing also to know with OpenShift is that the Docker builds aren't going to be available in every cluster because um, running Docker build requires root. And one of the things about managing security is not giving everyone root access. So it may be the case that especially with clusters that have been set up and access given by some other sysadmins to developers, you may not even be able to run Docker builds in your OpenShift cluster. Um, I want to make a plug for folks, if you're... Um, if you have a chance, uh, Red Hat has a great book about that covers everything that is mentioned in the comment by Peter. All that we don't have time to do everything. Um, go build a yeah, build is great. Um, but uh, check out this book, Deploying to OpenShift. Um, it's free online. I think that I put the link in the gist to it, but it covers all the different ways to build OpenShift applications and deploy. Uh, all the information is for OpenShift three. There hasn't been one that com came out for four yet. But the information is still great. Um, and yeah, if there, if you have specific, like it gets into a lot of specifics about how you might be able to set up more specific builds and the differences between a lot of the build strategies, um, which we won't have time to go into today. But yeah, that's a great, it's a great point that you're making that there are a lot of different ways to build and some are better than others, um, but they all have their place. They all have their uses um, and yeah. Uh, We'll, if there's anything specific in the end, we'll maybe try to cover that. Um, but yeah, this, uh, I'm gonna plug along with this <laughs> because watching the time. Um, in this lab, we'll work with the OpenShift Web Console and with the OpenShift OC CLI um, on IBM Cloud Shell. The following image is a simplified overview of the topics in the lab. Um, and keep in mind that OpenShift is a Kubernetes platform. Yeah, so um, Kubernetes, it, is the engine that makes the OpenShift car run. Um, it's it's great. every a lot of the commands that are I, I mean every command that in kube control is a valid OC command. Um, so if you're familiar with Kubernetes, then there's not a lot that changes. I think that a lot of times when we give this workshop, and it probably won't be the case here because this is to like folks in the Red Hat OpenShift ecosystem, um, making the differentiations between Kubernetes and OpenShift, and people understanding that they're like they're different, but it's still it's Kubernetes underneath. And yeah, sometimes we talk about um, how OpenShift was like a Rails thing initially, and then it was rebuilt with Kubernetes underneath. Um, but yeah, I'm sure you all already know all that stuff, so I won't labor that point. Um, so the lab has two parts. We build and save the container image. Um, we create an OpenShift project. We define a build config. 
we start we build the pod inside of OpenShift and save the container image to the internal OpenShift container registry. Um, and then we'll deploy the application and expose the service. Um, and yeah, there's a lovely GIF here that <laughs> you can check out when we <laughs> when you have time to to view this on your own. So the first thing we want to do is create an OpenShift project. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, projects in OpenShift, you can think of them as um, a Kubernetes namespace that have some extra cool features built into it to make it work a little bit better. Um, as that's just kind of what OpenShift does. It <laughs> takes everything that Kubernetes does well and makes it a little bit better. Um, so oh, we're going to actually, there might be, I might have already done this. <laughs> so I'm going to make a different project, uh, but I'll have to watch. <laughs> I have to be careful about um, any sort of project names that are in any of the commands because, yeah, I'm going to pretend my first name, last name is something else today. Um, all right, let's open up our cloud shell. Um, and I'm going to pull up the instructions over in a different window. Yeah, I know how this works. I know how to do it, but it's always whenever I'm doing it live, working a little bit too fast that I get lost and something breaks, and I'm going to do my absolute best to not do that. So if I'm working a little slow, that's why. Um, so we want to make sure that we're in that root folder. And we're also going to go to deploying to OpenShift. Perfect. Um, we want to create a new project, which is done with the OC new project command. And then we're going to give the argument um, your first name, your last name. Uh, let's say my first name is Nigel and my last name is uh, OC project Nigel Nigel. Um, and that's going to create the new project. Great. Um, you can add applications to this project with the new app command. For example, try new app CentOS. Uh, I'm not going to do that because we have steps here. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a binary build here um, with the Docker build strategy. So there was some mention of binary builds before. Um, yeah, here we go. So we're going to do OC new build. So we get our build config created. Um, we're going to name it Authors Bin because it's our binary. Um, we're going to pass the flag binary. We're going to use the build strategy, strategy Docker. Okay. And Cool. Nice. So the resources that were created there, we've got an image stream, we've got a build config, and they were both successful. Um, so we're going to start the build now. So OC start build authors bin from directory is here. Uploading directory period as the binary input for the build. Um, and what we're going to do is hop over to our OpenShift console. All of the things that I've done here are available to be done from the console. But if we jump into our administrator view and then, oh, let me look at our builds. And I'm going to look at the project, Nigel, Nigel. There we go. Um, here's our build that's going right now. It is running. It's a Docker build, as we have already said in the, uh, in the flag that we passed. And yeah, we'll, we'll let that plug along. OK, so the build has started. Um, yeah. One of the things that we're going to have a look at is like with doing logs on IBM Cloud. Um, but what we're waiting to see here is that there's a, there's a part that says that our image was successfully pushed to our internal registry. So 
people may be familiar with container registries dealing with Docker Hub, or maybe you have a private registry somewhere. Um, and I think, well, I know that we have a, a service on IBM Cloud as well if you want to set up your own registries. Um, and yeah, inside of Red Hat, uh, excuse me, inside of OpenShift, <laughs> there is a, an internal uh, container registry, just like Kubernetes has an internal registry that it's storing all of the containers that become the pods that are being used in our deployments. Build is taking a little while, <laughs> um, but yeah, when it's built, um, we'll see that that image was pushed over to the registry and then we'll be able to deploy it. So we're gonna hang out for a second. Um, how are you doing, Diane? Wonderful, if I stop hitting mute all the time. Um, it's <laughs> really good on, on both channels, so you're, you're flying along fine. Cool, great, awesome. <laughs> Um, we'll maybe like push ahead a little bit. I don't want to sit and wait for this thing to build, um, because we have so much to cover. We have so much to talk about. Um, the next thing that we want to do, uh, is to verify the container image inside of OpenShift. So if we looked at the image streams inside of builds, instead of where we were looking at, uh, looking at the builds themselves, we see that this image stream was created, uh, three minutes ago. Um, there's one image in it. And yeah, yeah, it's, oh, it has, oh, from a pushed image. Um, and we want to look at the information under, uh, under the, oh yeah, the image repository. So that's the, that's the repo um, internally to OpenShift that our container lives. Um, and then we're going to need this in a minute because we're going to look at the first thing we're going to look at is if you're used to kubernetes already how you might mimic the same things in openshift and we're going to need this string i'm just going to copy it now to update our yaml so a little bit of foreshadowing um so we're going to deploy the microservice that's uh, the next thing that we've got to do um and uh Pods are the basic building blocks in Kubernetes. That's the smallest uh, manipulatable unit. You don't really deal with containers, um, uh, pod, but pods are just a group of one or more containers. Um, and it represents the processes running in your cluster. Um, so uh, let's start with the deployment.yaml. So again, um, we have inside of, our, inside of our repository, we already have the YAML already there for you for the deployment um, and yeah, so if you're unfamiliar with how the YAML works, I'd encourage you to check this out. Um, we could spend workshops talking about YAML, <laughs> um, but the important things that we want you to see here are just that we've got uh, the name of our container, or the name of, yeah, the name of our container, the image, um, which ports are running, and then um, the liveliness probes. So in the full deployment.yaml, we're gonna have to change excuse me, we're gonna to have to change this uh, this line to be able to put the right one for our deployment there. So we're gonna first edit the YAML. So let me get back over to our Cloud Shell, perfect. Um, and yeah, we're gonna look in our deployment folder uh, and we're gonna copy the template Deployment YAML that's already there. We're going to call it deployment YAML. And then we're going to edit that deployment. And all we're going to want to do is change this line here. So dollar sign. Oops, <laughs> I did that wrong. Bem is not working with me today. It's okay. We'll do this the slow way. I'm gonna remember the what I did wrong, like right after this is done. Of course, the tabbing's messed up too. Be careful of your indentation in YAML, just like Python, except you don't get a warning. Right. Then I'm gonna save that. Um, and then 
we're going to apply that deployment. So uh, OC apply dash F because we're going to pass in the file as an argument deployment.yaml. Our deployment was created. Um, so let's go look in our topology um, in OpenShift to make sure that that is showing up the way we expect it to. So we're going to jump over to our developer view um, and look at our topology. And look at there, a brand new shiny deployment of our authors.bin. The container is creating. We're done. Yeah. We're going to look at how to do this from the console, but for those folks that, yeah, a lot of times who are dealing with like shelling in the resources don't have the luxury of looking at this beautiful interface that we have here in OpenShift. All of the stuff is available from the command line um, and we're showing it with the cloud shell, but yeah, works as easily when you're shelled in. We're going to give that a second to go. Uh, let me look at what comes after this part. Yeah, um, we're going to also apply a service. Um, and this is another thing that if you're used to dealing with Kubernetes, like you'll be familiar with. If you if you haven't and you're just dealing with OpenShift, um, count yourself lucky because we're going to show how to do that um, in a much simpler way by checking some boxes um, when we're deploying in OpenShift. Um, so I want to at least draw your attention here to the, the YAML here. So in the service, we see a selector of the pod using the label app authors. Um, and yeah, this is again already been created for you, but you can update it as you wish. And we're just going to apply that service. It doesn't have to be changed because the port's the same, regardless of which which registry it's deployed to, um, which registry your container stored in. So we're going to go ahead and apply that service right now. So OC, oops, apply. Um, we're going to pass in as an argument that file that's in this folder service.yaml. Cool. And that service was created. Um, and so we're going to check in the web console again in that topology view before there wasn't, there wasn't a service in routes, but there will be now when we go look. So in that topology, now we have a service um, and, well, the routes aren't up yet. We'll figure out what's going on why it's misbehaving, um, but, oh, I didn't expose it. That's my fault. <laughs> so after you apply the service, then you have to expose the route. So let me do that right now. Um, OC expose. Uh, there's dash bin for our binary build. Okay, now that that's been, let's have a look now. Okay, yeah, there it is. <laughs> so it's my fault. It's usually my fault. Everything that goes well is because they were, wrote this workshop beautifully and everything that broke is absolutely my fault. Um, so we can look again at the at the route. Uh, this is what we saw in our browser before. And if we then go to that same um, UI, which was at slash open API slash UI, Perfect. We see what we saw locally, which means that we're it's working. So that at least gives us some idea of how it might be to the develop locally with Docker using containers, everything like that, and then deploying it to OpenShift and making sure that our environments kind of match. The only difference being this long string of text at the beginning here for where our application actually is. Check. Yeah. You can expose deployment to create an internal service, just like you can expose the service to create an ingress route. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, cool. Um, and um, if we ran the get, um, yeah, you can run it in the in the UI, checking it with Nicholas's name because that's what's in this one, um, and then we get the output of his Twitter and blog, um, and yeah, we can pass that as a as a, a curl command as well. But I want to move a little bit ahead. Get to yeah, and if we're doing this as when we're doing this as a workshop where everyone's following along, 
have you create this log DNA service to capture the logs from your OpenShift cluster. And I definitely encourage you to do that um, when you get a chance, uh, if you're doing this um, on IBM Cloud, so that you can get a bit more intuitive look at your logs and everything. Um, but let's move on to the other deployment strategies, the, the other deployment options in OpenShift. Uh, so if you have an image that exists in Docker Hub already, you can do that. So we're going to be dealing more with the OpenShift UI as opposed to dealing with the command line for now for these for this for these next couple of sections. So I'm going to jump back over to um, our developer view and we're going to add. Wait, I clicked the wrong thing. One second. I'm back. Ah, there you are. Okay. <laughs> we're going to go to uh, create, uh, we're going to deploy a new container image. So um, in our ads, choose a container image. We're going to do um, Anheilof uh, authors v1, which is um, the same container that we had, the same container that we, the same image that we had before, but this time we're going to get it from Docker Hub as opposed to um, providing the, the Docker file for our binary build. Um, we're gonna change the name um, to be author's image because we're deploying it as an image this time. Um, we're gonna create a, uh, we're gonna create a deployment config. And then um, we're gonna automatically create a route to the application, which is, prevents that whole like YAML fiasco that I just ran into before. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and create that now. Um, and if we look at it, uh, we can see yeah, the same things that we um, that we had before that we had to set up with all of the YAML and everything that are automatically kind of handled for us when we do it um, with the UI in OpenShift. Um, and then when it's done, we're going to go ahead and check that same. Oh, it's not ready yet. <laughs> Give it a little bit. Still not ready yet. Come on, buddy. Should be ready soon. But yeah, there was a, there was a fair amount to get the, the job application up and running. It wasn't immediately accessible before, ah, there it is, it's up and running now. Then we're gonna go ahead to that same open API UI and see exactly what we expect to see. So that deployment took us a lot shorter time than it did before to build it, then to apply the YAML files and everything else. You can just, if you have a, an image that's pre-made, um, as long as it's OCI compliant, um, you can run it in OpenShift with the exception of your containers can't be running as root. There's a flag that you can change in OpenShift that don't recommend it. But yeah, by default, your containers don't, you can't run as root because yeah, if your process escapes this container, then it can execute commands in your cluster as root and generally not a good thing. Um, so yeah, you if you have your own image that you like to deploy to OpenShift, uh, yeah, all you have to do right there. I and mean, then this is the same Java application that we had before that's been containerized um, and deployed to OpenShift. Now we have two deployment strategies. We did a build um, with the binary, and then we have an image now. And uh, let's see. And next, we want to look at source the image build. Uh, excuse me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, well, the first, the first we're going to do it from uh, from a Git repository. And I'm going to do that from the, the exercise has us doing that from the command line. So let's do that that way. Because, like, oh, I can just do this instead and then break something and then spend you know, all of our time troubleshooting. So we're gonna make sure that we're in the right project. Oops, OC, not PC. This is a Mac. Project. We're using Project Nigel Nigel. Great, that's the one that we intend to be using. Um, and we're gonna use the command OC new app. Dash app. Um, and I'm going to copy and paste in this long thing here, and we'll talk about it in a second. 
So, yeah, so we've got a string for the repository, this OpenShift from IBM Cloud. The context directory, so where our actual application is, is in that deploying to OpenShift directory, and we're going to name it authors-git because this is our Git deployment. Um, so get that started. Git. Um, and we're going to watch the logs here. Great. Great. Everything's built. Um, amazing. So what you're going to see here is that because inside of our directory and on GitHub, we have a Docker file there. It just takes that Docker file that's in our, uh, in our Git repository and uses that to build and expose our application. Um, and so if we, we didn't have to create any YAML files or anything like that. We just pointed it to a repository that had a Docker file in it. Um, and if our repository didn't have a Docker file in it, that's where we get to source the image. So I got a little bit ahead of myself there. Um, we're still using um, a Docker build strategy because we have the Docker file in our repository. Um, excuse me, let's go have a look at that. Oops. Jump over to builds and we see that our authors dash git build is here. And the Git repository is there, the IBM OpenShift on IBM Cloud Workshops. Um, and if we look at, like, all of the YAML is already generated for us there. For the build config, we don't have to deal with any of the YAML stuff, which can be stressful um, if you're not used to dealing with it. Even if you are used to dealing with it, then it, then it can be really stressful. Um, and so after the after the build status is complete, then it'll be ready to hit. Um, so let's authors git build run is still running, um, so it's going to take a minute um, as it did before, um, and then we'll have to create the routes again. Oh wait. We've got the service there, um, so we'll have to expose that service, and then we'll have to get the routes. All right, so we'll jump back over to our cloud shell, OC, expose uh, the service for authors dash git. Okay. All right, now we got that exposed, and then we're going to grab the route from the, the CLI as opposed to from uh, from the UI this time. So OC get routes, uh, routes, authors, dash get. All right, cool. We've got our route. Same thing that we expect to see. Open API UI. Same as what we had locally. All right, so, so far we have done three different build strategies, um, not counting the one locally. We've got a build that we did uh, from an image in, uh, that was existing in a public Docker Hub, uh, Docker registry. We've got this Git build that we just did, and then we did our binary build as well. Let's see if we can fit another one in here. <laughs> So, um, yeah, we've got that built. I think I did all the things here. Um, yeah, if you had your own image, that's back before. We're past that now. We did all the, yeah, we've got three different deployments there. Amazing. And now we get to the source to image builds, which was uh, mentioned at the beginning. Um, so. Uh, we have a custom builder image set up, um, that same image that we were talking about before. Um, so there's not um, in the catalog already uh, the Open Liberty Builder image. And so we're going to pull in the one that, that we had before. And we're going to use OpenShift to make it available to, to us. Uh, we're going to use the CLI to make it available. So I'm going to hop over to our CLI. We're going to start. Um, we're already in the right project. Um, that's the first step here. Uh, so we're the the image, the builder image that um, Nicholas made, as well as available in a public repository. 
So I'm just going to copy in that command. So we want to import an image, um, the docker.io and hide love, um, then the source to image open to Liberty latest. We're going to confirm that, yes, we want to pull this image and add it to our internal registry. Great, 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 great. That worked just fine first time. Um, of course it did. I expected it. 100% expected it to work. No problem. I'm so not, did I. I'm not surprised. So yeah, did I. I totally knew it would work. <laughs> so we're going to um, go uh, check out in our admin view. We're going to have a look at the image streams. And we can see that our S to I open liberty build or our open liberty image stream is here. And the cool thing about these image streams is like if the if the image gets updated, um, then it there's, it triggers the update here in OpenShift, and then all of our images that were built with those images are updated again. So with dealing with um, security vulnerabilities, anything like that, you don't have to go through and rebuild every single container that has the flaw in it. You just look at your builder image, patch whatever needs to happen, and then your builds automatically will roll out from there, and you can keep everything up to date and secure. Um, so we're going to move ahead what comes next um deploying the microservice so yeah the previous step installs the open liberty builder image only to have to be executed once after this multiple open liberty applications can be deployed without docker files and yaml files the image builder expects a certain directory structure of open liberty projects with two files the server and the war um, so before the code can be pushed to OpenShift, the WAR file needs to be built with Maven, um, and Maven is in the IBM Cloud shell. If you're in a different shell, then you'll have to build it differently. But these are all the things that are, um, this is how the builder image is set up, so we have to do exactly this. But if you wanted to have a slightly different build strategy, you could set your, your builder images up to behave in whatever manner you would like. So I'm going to go ahead and follow these steps very closely. Um, so the first thing we want to make sure that we do is that we're in the right directory, um, which is root folder, the variable we set up before, slash deploying to OpenShift. Cool. And then we're going to maven package. Let that run. Um, so after those commands, the file authors.war will exist in the target directory, and you can check by doing a, a listing of that uh, that target directory. So when this builds, we'll see what we expect to see, and then we can set up a new build um, with that custom builder image that we just imported in OpenShift to be able to support this Java Open Liberty application. Lots and lots of text. Let me check the comments to see how we're doing. We're doing pretty good here. I think uh, all right. you've answered almost all of the questions, I think, that people have asked. And uh, Nice. And we're all trying to read the, the fine print here, so this is good. <laughs> okay, so I was successful, so I'm going to just check that uh, targets folder. Oops, target. Nice. So we have that war file that we're we're expecting to see, um, and so we can press on with deploying it with our custom builder image that we just brought into OpenShift. So let's set up a um, let's set up our uh, new app. So, see, oops, OC new app. Um, we're gonna call it S two. Oops, S S two I dash open dash liberty I should have copy and pasted this uh, colon latest tilde <laughs> slash dot and then we're going to name it uh, authors dash s to i and if I broke something then we're going to copy and paste in this command all right, great. <laughs> so yeah, we've got our new, <laughs> yeah, we've got our new build set up, um, and we're still gonna have to um, 
we're gonna have to well let's check let's see how it's doing jump back over to our buster we're gonna check um in our topology let's go have a look all right this s to i here's the one that we just did build one is running um so uh there's a few more details in the in the documentation here um so we got that output that we expected we'll see that the uh, the build failed which is to be expected the first build um before the microservice can be deployed with the image builder the code uh needs to be uploaded to openshift this is done via the oc start build so in the oc start build command we refer to the code of our java microservice in the current directory so we'll execute that in the cloud shell um so let me jump back over oc start build um, from directory here authors dash s all right all right cool now our build has begun and then Yeah, so build one did fail, um, which is fine. We need to give it access to the war and the server files um, that we created when we uh, set up the Maven project. So we'll have a look here, um, but yeah, this one should work, no problem. So let me jump back to the topology view. Oh, wrong one, push the image. Okay, when build two is complete, um, a pod will be started and eventually be running. Um, once, yeah, we'll need to expose the route again um, once it's complete. Oh, it is complete. Um, uh, so we need to expose the service first um, and then get the route. So let's expose that service. S to I. All right, that's exposed. Um, and then we can get the route here. Um, or we can get the route from the topology. That's here, uh, the topological view, our route here. Um, and we see exactly what we expected to see before. Open API UI. We have used four different different ways of building and deploying our Java applications uh, to OpenShift. We started with um, doing our binary build, um, then we grabbed from an existing Docker Hub uh, image, then we went over and did it from a Git repository that had a Docker file in it, and then we did our source to image build um, using our custom Java builder image. But if we're doing a different language, the source to image build, if we did something that was in the catalog, for example, um, it would have been a lot more straightforward. Um, let's say that we were doing like the Node.js one um, and we create an application, we would just have to point to a Git repo there that had a Node.js app in it and it would run through everything and we wouldn't have to do all of the work of exposing the routes and everything else. But because we set up this custom builder image, we had to do a little bit more configuration than um, than we would, you know, normally. But yeah, that's Java for you. You need extra configuration. You know, <laughs> I'm sure that you Java developers out there are familiar with that. Um, so yeah, if we go back to our topology, um, yeah, we can see the the four different builds. Um, oops, did not mean to do that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there you have it, folks. Um, Deployment options for Java with OpenShift. Woohoo! Uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for this. This this is a a tour de force, shall we say? Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to walking through the workshop myself uh, again um, uh, in a slower speed um, and a bigger, <laughs> much bigger font um, for my eyeballs. But uh, oh, I'm you. sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it, it's perfectly fine. I just need to make a bigger screen. And I'm I'm doing good here. So this is this has been really wonderful. Um, and, and if you people want to get a hold of Nigel, we'll put all of this up on YouTube 
um, on the RH OpenShift YouTube channel shortly. And we're, um, we're, we're really thrilled to have you here. We'll make you do this again on other flavors of things as new features and functions come out. And I, you know, I, I'm, I'm very impressed. Um, I do see, like, when your screen gets a little bit smaller, there's a little strange green bar on the side. But I think this actually okay. screens nicely on Twitch and um, Blue Jeans simultaneously. So next time, we're going to do you Twitch, Blue Jeans, YouTube, and Facebook. Oh, man. <laughs> so thank you for being game and trying this all out with us. And we really look yeah, forward yeah. to having you back again soon. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Thank you all. I hope you all are taking care of yourselves out there, uh, being safe. You know, um, it's troubling times, and I'm glad that we're finding ways to stay connected, to still be able to deliver content, to help you deploy your applications, learn something new. So thanks so much. I'm glad you all spent the, spent your time with me, um, and hopefully we'll see you soon. All right. Stay home, stay safe, and um, be well, and be kind to each other. So take care, guys. Thank you.